Hey, can you take a picture of me? It's a picture of people, which is known as a portrait. You need to use the rule of thirds. It's super easy to use this rule. Imagine that you draw two vertical lines at the one third points in your frame, and then you draw two horizontal lines that are also at the one third point. Let's place my body on the left third and get your subject to face their body inwards into the photo and then look at the camera. It's a very nice placement. But what you don't want is to have your subject on the left one third facing out of the photo. The reason for that is because your viewer's eye will follow what your subject is looking at and your viewer's eye will leave the photo and it will never come back. The most important part, do not place your face in the middle of the photo. You don't want a shot where the face is in the middle and then the second half of the photo is sky. You want your face to be on the top one third line, preferably where two of the third lines intersect. This can be on the left or it can be on the right, in front of a viewpoint of some type. You want to do a second thing now, and that is to place the most important element on the other third line. So here's what I mean. Let's say I'm standing in front of a lavender field and there is one stone house out in the middle of that lavender field. You want to place that stone house on the right third of the photo. So I'll be on the left third, I'm looking at the camera, the stone house is on the right third, now you have a perfectly composed photo. You want to avoid anything that is busy in the background from protruding out from especially the head of your subject. Let's take that same photo and say that I was on the right third, right in front of the stone house, and not only am I blocking the stone house, but there are elements of it that are coming out from the sides of my head. It doesn't look good. And this is especially true with telephone poles and trees. So you want to make sure that there's nothing behind your subject's head that is going to become a distraction in the photo. Let's say that your subject was not standing in front of a viewpoint, but was just standing in front of a non-textured background. Now this is a time where you don't need to apply the rule of thirds, and you can in fact place your subject in the middle of the frame, ensuring that the face is on the top third line. So place the face on the top third line, put your subject right in the middle, and now this is a symmetrical looking portrait, and this really works. And this is how you go from an amateur photo to a pro photo. It involves blurring out the background so that the face of your subject is nice and tack sharp, and the background is completely blown out and blurry. This is how you make your photos look pro. Now the way to do this is very easy. If you have an iPhone or an Android phone, there is usually an option inside your camera app called Portrait. Use that and it will blur out the background. If you're shooting with a digital camera, it's also easy to do this. It's really just two steps. Step number one is to choose aperture priority on your camera and adjust your f-stop number, which is that tiny little dial, to the smallest number. Your smallest number may be f2.8, it could be f3.5, you just want it to be the smallest one you've got. Then you want to zoom in your lens to the maximum amount of zoom. And when you do those two things and ensure that you are focusing on the face of your subject, then the background will be completely blurry and your portrait is going to look professional. So here's your recipe. Step number one, move your subject around so that your subject will be on one of the third lines in the frame. Step number two, adjust your frame so that any interesting elements that are in the background will also be on one of the third lines. And step number three is the lighting. Let's say that you were taking a photo of me and there's a sunset behind me. The sky is very bright and your camera is going to read that very bright sky and it's going to make the frame darker. So that means that I'm going to turn out to be silhouetted. I will be dark, but the sky behind me will be bright. One way of compensating for that is to bring the camera closer and to use the flash on your camera to illuminate your subject. Another way of compensating for it is to move your subject so that the light is on your subject's face. This is the far better way to go. You can use natural light from a window, and one thing that works very well for that is to take a bed sheet and hang it over the window. This diffuses the light and makes it soft. Another way of doing it is with artificial lights, like I'm using here. I have a very bright light on camera right. This is known as the key light. This is the strongest light. Then there's a less bright light over here, which is called the fill light. It just kind of fills in the shadows uh, on, on the dark side of the face. And this is how you can do it very easily using artificial light, even using lamps inside your home. So let's recap your recipe. Step number one, move your subject using the rule of thirds. Step number two, move your camera and use the rule of thirds to capture any interesting elements that are in the background. And step number three is ensure that the lighting is going to be correct on your subject and that your subject is not backlit, like having them stand in front of a sunset. That's the basic recipe for taking portraits, which are the most common photo that you're going to take during your lifetime.